Have you ever thought about trying a workbench kit that allows you to put one together real quick and real easy? I definitely have, but are they useful and do they last? I don't know. Let's find out. So I purchased a Simpson Strong Tie kit off of Amazon for about $40. Let's check it out. It comes with eight of these corner looking brackets and a hundred pack of these one and a quarter inch screws. Now these brackets look very similar to Simpson's other brackets they sell for decks and other building structures, so hopefully these will be good quality. The one thing I did notice very quickly is the lack of instructions in this kit. If you've built some stuff in the past, you might not need those because there are some simple pictures on the side of the box along with the wood sizes. But if you're new to making stuff, I did find a QR code on the side of the box that allowed me to go and print off some instructions from their website. Another neat thing about this kit is it's only supposed to require a minimal amount of tools, especially for like beginners, which it says here in a box only five tools, a pencil, a measuring tape, a clamp, a drill, and a circular saw. But as I was looking at the instructions really quickly, I noticed right over here, it has a sixth one, a framing square. So I definitely recommend getting that or maybe just a speed square. One of the two that'll help you use the circular saw cut some nice perpendicular lines across those two by fours. Now that we have the brackets and the screws, what else do we need for this setup? Well, according to the instructions and the side of the box, we need six two by fours, two pieces of plywood that are two foot by four foot, preferably probably five eighths inch or three quarter inch thick, and a two foot by four foot piece of pegboard. And just as I was about to start, I realized that there's another issue. There's something else that's not listed on the box. Here it says, just add lumber. But if you print off the instructions and you look inside, right here it says add some additional screws. Uh, you need four at two and a half inches and 20 at one and a quarter flathead wood screws. So make sure you print off the instructions so there's not any errors. Now that we finally have all that straightened out, let's go cut some wood. If by chance you have a miter saw, you can definitely make these cuts a lot faster and safer, but a circular saw definitely works. Now that I cut all the wood to the specified lengths in the instructions, let's start the assembly. I'm gonna try to build this workbench on top of, well, another workbench, so it's a little bit easier for you to see. But I do understand that if you're starting out, you'll probably have to build this on the floor. For the first pieces, I think I'm gonna start off with these front and bottom corners. They seem like they'll be the easiest, and it says to come up six inches from the floor. I'm gonna follow these directions, but keep in mind that you can always adjust that lower shelf a little higher or a little lower, it's totally up to you. But also remember that your feet will probably be under it a lot of times, so if you don't have it high enough, you'll be kicking it a lot. When you're sliding your pieces on, make sure you keep track of the pictures and your instructions, because you could easily get these backwards and just mess things up. Once I got it in the right spot, then I've clamped it together onto the wood so it doesn't move, and that way I can add some screws. For each of these brackets, there's a total of 12 screw holes, so just be prepared, there is a lot of assembly. For these inside screw holes, I think I'm actually going to wait until after I install the other pieces of wood. That way, if it needs some adjustment, I don't have to take the screw back out. I then installed this horizontal piece into the bracket, making sure it's nice and flush against this leg, and then I clamped it down so I can add some screws and not have it move. Now I can attach this inside screw here and everything should be nice and tight. When I first started assembling this, this joint moved around a lot and it made me nervous that this wasn't gonna be very stable. But once I got those two inner screws in place, it is nice and rigid, so I'm happy. In the process of installing each piece of wood, if you come across a bracket that's just a little bit too tight, maybe it's bent a little bit, just take something like a rubber mallet or something and just gently tap the wood into place because we want to make sure it is fully seated against the legs in here, otherwise this could wobble a lot. Once I started assembling the back legs, I realized um, I'm not going to have enough ceiling space to continue to assemble this on my workbench, so we're going to move it to the floor. I attached the brackets in the back legs the same way as I did the front, and now we just need to assemble it together. When you're installing one of your back pieces, it might be a little bit challenging to get in. This is where a mallet can come in handy. In the process of installing this front bracket, I went to the exact measurement that it told me to go to, and there's a problem. Let me show you. Here's the exact measurement they wanted me to go to. If I slide the bracket right up there to it, and then I'm gonna put one of the pieces of wood in place just to measure it out. And if you notice, that the leg is sitting about an eighth of an inch higher than the top of this board. That's a problem. Because we need this board that goes across to be the same exact height as this leg, so the plywood will sit flush on top of it. Let me show you how to fix this. First take one of the pieces of wood that goes across and we want to insert it into the bracket, making sure to keep everything as flush as we can within the bracket. Raise it up until the top edge is flush with the top of the leg. Make sure the bracket's nice and tight. 
take a pencil, make a mark across the top. Now you know exactly where to install that bracket. Now when installing our back bracket is not as critical as the front, but we do want it to be pretty close. So measure up from the floor to the top of our bracket, and then measure up from the floor on the back leg, make a mark, and that's exactly where we need to put that one. I finally got all the wood that goes from the front to the back connected. Now there is one thing I discovered. When you're installing these pieces, I still strongly suggest you use a clamp. Clamp the top of the wood and the bottom of the metal together so it kind of squishes and holds everything nice and tight. Otherwise, you'll easily get some gaps under here. And when you put the screws in like I experienced by accident, you'll get so many things out of alignment. So use a clamp. With our frame nearly complete, it's now time to start adding our plywood top bench and our lower shelf. And to do that as instructed, we now need to notch out a section for each of the legs. But that can be a bit of a challenge if all you have is a circular saw. Because whenever you're trying to cut a notch out using a circular saw, you're going to have to way overcut on the opposite side just to get that notch. Now just imagine if you accidentally cut this on the wrong side of your workbench, you have major grooves cut in your workbench or it can even weaken it and it won't be as strong. So to cut out those notches, I strongly suggest using something like a handsaw or maybe even a jigsaw if you have one. At least that way you know you won't weaken your workbench or have any ugly grooves. And if you cut it just right, it's gonna be a tight fit, so if you can expect that, but it might need some trimming. Oops. Perfect. Now if you're planning on keeping your workbench pretty stationary, your bottom workbench or your bottom shelf is probably good enough as is. But if you ever plan on moving it or maybe stick it in the back of a truck to take it somewhere, then I strongly suggest putting at least a few screws in it and that'll make sure it stays nice and in place. When it comes to the top of our workbench, we only need to notch out for the two back legs. And again, I would avoid using a circular saw. And of course, while installing a top, I discovered another small issue. Let me show you. If we look at the front left corner, you'll notice that the plywood is actually inset by almost half an inch. And on the right front corner, you'll notice the plywood is actually hanging off the edge by almost half an inch. So in the process of putting this together, we somehow got it out of square. Now that could have happened just because the wood is probably a little bit warped on top of, uh, maybe I didn't line up the brackets exactly 90 degrees. So I'm not gonna blame the manufacturer for that issue, but it is something you'll have to keep an eye out for. To somewhat fix this problem, I was able to moved the wood around, thank goodness I hadn't screwed it down yet, and made it fairly flush on this end, but not perfect. The only downside is I have a nice big gap over here where I had previously cut it, but that's okay. I can live with that, and I think that'll work. When it comes to securing the top in place, I'd recommend putting at least four screws in this, close enough to the corners as possible, going into your front and back rails, because they're probably attached the strongest out of everything. And finally, we get to add our last board. This right here creates that frame for the backing so we can have some pegboard so we can hang some stuff. This will be where those two and a half inch screws come in handy because we want to go all the way through this board into the piece below. Now, of course, this will be going into end grain, so it's not the strongest of connections, but as long as we don't try and lift up this workbench using this backboard, I have a feeling it'll be fine. For the pegboard, I just use some clamps to hold it in place and that way I can add a bunch of screws going all the way around. And there we go, it is finally finished. This turned out to be a pretty nice workbench once everything was put together. Part of the strength of this workbench is the thicker plywood, so if you can use it, I'd strongly recommend it. Part of having a sturdy workbench is being able to handle a bunch of abuse, so let's try something. That is nice and sturdy. Oh yes, that should last a long time. Whenever I build any equipment for the garage or workshop, I always get a ton of questions. So, I wrote some of those down here and I wanna answer some of those for you right now. First off, what's included in the kit? Well, like we mentioned before, it comes in a small box like this. You get all the metal brackets, some of the screws, and that's about it. You have to go out and buy the two by fours, the plywood, the pegboard, and some additional screws. So make sure you look at those instructions before you do that. And number two, does it come with instructions? I know a lot of you might not like instructions, instructions I do and if you look at the box there are some minimal instructions on it but overall it does not come with any instructions that is unless you go to their website and print this off now of course there's a number of things on here that is not included on the box so unless you are just an expert of building stuff without instructions I'd probably suggest at least looking this over before you build it number three was there anything missing or I had to add to the actual kit to make it work well, it's a little hard to see, but right here in the box, it says just add lumber. 
And considering I had to actually go out and get additional screws to assemble this together, I find that to be a little deceiving. I mean, I have extra screws in my shop, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But if you're one to not have many screws, or maybe you're just starting out, you buy this kit and you realize, wait a minute, I still have to go out and buy additional screws to put it together? I, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting that on one of my products if it wasn't true. So that was definitely a downside of the kit. Number four, was it easy to assemble? Well, as long as you can make sure that all of your cuts can be at 90 degrees on your 2x4s and you can get your plywood as straight as possible, yes, it was pretty easy to assemble, so I definitely give it a thumbs up on that one. Number five, does it have much adjustability or ease of upgrading? Well, I know everybody's shop is a little bit different, so if you need to make this a little bit narrower, yes, it is possible these brackets will work with you, but of course you'll have to change the dimensions of all the 2x4s and the plywood that you're using to fit within those dimensions. Upgradable, well, you are limited because it doesn't have any, any additional brackets to go with it, but I guess you could add additional pieces to it or maybe hang additional brackets off of it. I've even seen off the top of here somebody turned it into a shelf. So yes, you could upgrade it in a minor type of way. Number six, is it fixable if something is to break? Yes, fortunately, since we're only using screws to put everything together, it may take a little time to unscrew everything, but yes, let's say the plywood top gets damaged, you can replace it, or one of these two by fours gets broken, you can replace it. So yeah, pretty easy to fix. Number seven, can this be moved around or traveled with? Well, I mean, you could definitely move this around your shop or garage, wherever you want. It's sturdy, can handle that. But I probably wouldn't necessarily try and take it around, uh, you know, location to location, especially if you're a contractor. Is it possible? Yes. Two people could easily load this in the back of a truck and you could do that, but you don't want this pegboard to get wet. The rest of the wood got a little damp in the rain, not that big a deal, but the pegboard would probably start to fall apart. But overall, it's sturdy and it's, it is possible to travel with. And number eight, and usually the most common question asked is how much did this cost and is it worth it? So if I include the plywood, the pegboard, the two by fours, and the kit, that was about $125. I had some of the extra screws, so that didn't cost me anything, but you might want to add a few extra dollars if you're going to add those screws in there as well. That's totally up to you. Overall, is this kit worth it? Well, if you are a beginner, and you have very little knowledge of how to assemble stuff and how to build stuff out of wood, this kit could probably be very useful for you. Now, in my case, I've been building stuff for years and I could easily build a workbench without needing a kit. But that, is, again, is totally up to you on if you find it to be worth it. To me, I would probably lean to not use the kit just because I had no other ways of building stuff, but that's me. So totally up to you. I hope you find this video helpful, and if you did, make sure you let me know in the comments. If you have any other questions, put them there as well. Otherwise, check out this next video.